Hello and welcome to the PST CoachCast. Today my guest is Coach Kevin Cossey, who is a good friend of mine over in Austin, Texas right now. Coach, how are you doing today? I'm pretty good, man. How about you? I can't complain. Uh, you could have told me to meet you at 2.30 a.m. On, on a Sunday or a Saturday night and I would have been, let's do it, because I've been anxious to get this going. We've been trying to get this for a while. And I'm just yeah. jacked that we finally made it work. Yeah, man. We're both really, really busy, you know. Oh, no <laughs> doubt. <laughs> Uh, how's a uh, how's little Maya Papaya doing? She's doing great, man. Uh, she's on a she's on an AU Select softball team right now, so uh, she just kind of got off of her fall break. We're excited for the spring. We're actually on a new team now. Uh, she just tried out last Sunday, made the team, so we're excited for the new change, and uh, we're ready to rock and roll. I guess baby boy is not necessarily all baby right now either, huh? He's starting Dude, to get he's a little He's crawling big. around, getting into everything. We actually just had to buy him a, a cage to put him in because uh, he. <laughs> Dude, he, we got him a new little helmet we had to put on his head. He's felt, he's, he keeps falling down. So he's hitting his head on everything, and it's just it's, it's crazy. He's still going to be a linebacker, right? That's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping for a DN. <laughs> ah, all right, speed rush guy. I love it. Uh, okay, so UIL football season just ended, right? 5A, 6A got pushed back. And so big topic with everybody right now is off-season training, right? That's kind of the, the topic of the day. Yeah. And uh, we're going to go through what you guys are doing at Connolly or kind no, of we're, we're, things we're, or? we're actually going to, we're actually going to talk about, you know, kind of just, just my opinion on, on how, how I think a perfect off season should roll to, to kind of, to help your program and, and, and to get, to get the best out of off season, you know? Cool, cool, cool. And so I'm going to guess knowing you, that's going to involve some strength, some power, change of direction, agility type stuff. It's going to be kind of a, a marriage of all three of those. Oh, yeah. And you, you got to add a boot camp in there. Got to add know a boot camp in there. Got to add a boot camp. I think in one of the videos you sent, I even get to make an appearance. So that'll be fun. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Because <laughs> we should mention, I think this all this stuff is from the year that you and I were together at Queen City. True. Uh, so that would have been last off season. True. And then you've had a year to kind of marinate on everything and, and kind of build in even more of your own ideas and stuff you've gained uh, along the way. And so I'm mm -hmm. excited to hear you go after it, man. Awesome. Um, real quick, season-wise, you guys were kind of in a rebuild mode, right, uh, after? Yeah, 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 we were. Um, we, lost, we lost a lot of upperclassmen. Um, we had John A, who kind of was our motor. Uh, he, he ended up going to UT. He was a receiver, DB guy. Uh, he actually got a lot of playing time this year, um, playing some corner at UT. Um, and we had one of our uh, starting cornerbacks also transfer um, to LBJ. Oh, my gosh, LBJ is pretty good. Uh, but he transferred there. Um, and we, we just had a lot of young talent looking to be really good next year, though. Um, you know, we had a lot of sophomores and juniors starting on the field both ways for us. So I will say, man, they were in condition shape, but it's football, man. And, with COVID not having many numbers, we had a lot of people decided to opt out and not and not come join us this season. So um, it, it numbers really was was not. A, and playing in that know, district, that Pflugerville yeah. district, and then that Round Rock area is tough. North Austin's oh, yeah. tough, and I mean, there's sure. a lot of talent, obviously, all over the state. But that Central Texas on that I-35 corridor is it's a rough stretch. Oh yeah, oh yeah. All right. Well, I guess that's a part of your job to make sure the offseason goes right, right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, shoot, man, let's get right into it. So um, you've got your Build It, capital IT, in off season. So what, what's kind of the, the yeah, main structure of this thing? You know, shout, shout out to, to a guy that I know well, Eric Drotty. Uh, he, 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 him and uh, Jonathan Ramey, uh, Coach <laughs> Ramey, kind of came up with the It. And I really enjoyed it. You know, when, when you guys was at Trinity um, and I was over – I don't know where I was at at the time, um, but but I, I saw him post whatever it takes with a capital it. And and I texted him and I said, man, what's up with the it? And he said, man, you know, you got to have the it, you know, whatever it takes, you know, whatever it is. So I'm like, man, I, I, I really enjoy it. I really like it. So it really just stuck with me. Um, so, you know, and, and it can be numerous of things, you know, that that, you know, you guys, we all came up with all these terms, grit, you know, uh, integrity. Um, you know, we, we came up with all these cool little terms that we use the it with. Uh, so I kind of just stuck with it. So build it in off season, whatever it is, we're going to build it. 
no okay. doubt. And knowing uh knowing the Drotty family, I'm I'm gonna guess Lisa Page had something to do with uh, the it because she's all over the slogans and. Oh yeah, yeah. Big shout out to Lisa. <laughs> big shout out to Lisa, and obviously a, a, a big cheer sponsor. So it might oh, yeah, be a little bit sure. of bring it on going on there too. So. Oh yeah, bring it on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> probably drive sit on the couch one day while they had that on TV. He goes, oh, that's, yeah, it. that's it, <laughs> so, right there. <laughs> I'm gonna have to bug him about that. See, that's what the case was. <laughs> All right, let me start a screen share real quick because I want to pull up this document, and uh, that's cool, right? If I, if I uh... oh yeah, 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 go ahead, go ahead. All right, all right, and all right, man. Let's talk through this sucker. There we go. That's it right there. All right, so off-season training. So for next season, like I just said, the UIL season just ended. And so uh, dad's season ended high tempo, fast paced, fun, full of energy, focused on teaching or reteaching. I like that. Uh, injury prevention, size, strength, power, speed. And the, the biggest one of all, probably that mental toughness barrier. That, that's a hard oh, yeah, one for a lot for of sure. kids these days to get, to get past. Sure. So, uh, hey, man, and, and I really, I really focus a lot on, you know, mental toughness. And of course, every it's off season. Everybody wants to, to gain more strength, gain more power, um, more size, you know, more muscle, you know, all that's cool. But at the end of the day, I want to have fun with my athletes too. You know what I mean? Like it, you know, I, I do want them to enjoy coming to off season. I don't want them to, you know, <laughs> I've been around a lot of programs in my seven years of coaching. It seemed like it's not a lot of years of coaching, but man, I've been, I've been at seven different schools in seven years, you know? Right. Um, and, and and I will tell you that I've seen kids do so many things. Hey, let me join basketball so that I don't have to go through off season. You know, I want those kids to say, you know what? Hey, I want to be a part of off season because it's fun, it is live, it's energetic, and uh, we're gonna have a good time. And at the end of the day, we're gonna get work, we're gonna have fun, and it's gonna benefit. It's gonna benefit us at the end of the day. So next season, um, we'll be we'll be rocking and rolling. No doubt. And I see here in big, bold letters, that second paragraph, like we're, we're not in there trying to kill the, the young, smaller guys in the weight room. It doesn't all have to be weight room, weight room, weight room. There's a lot of things you can do in off season to really get some benefits out of. Yeah, for sure. You know, I, I, I say that because, you know, and, and it's just my opinion, but, but I've seen and heard and, and kind of through videos and social media you know, I see kids put a lot of weight on, oh, it's off season. We got to build strength. We don't have time. We got to get it ready for next year. And, and and I myself as a coach was a victim to this, you know, until I really sat down and really said, what am I doing? But as a coach, you don't really think about, you know, like, you know, I put injury prevention, you know, it's off season. So we got to pound it, pound it, pound it, pound it, pound it. And then we, we try to get in there and put all this heavy weight on and, and just go to work. But at the same time, it's like, what are we really doing? You know, yeah, I can get a, I can put a lot of weight on that kid. But at the end of the day, you know, an injury athlete is a no good athlete. You know what I mean? Like, I got to be able to make sure this kid is mobile. I got to make sure he stays healthy. Uh, and I got to make sure that uh, I prepare him for next for next season. And I don't have to do that. by Always just pounding the weights at him and trying to load the bar. You know, there's other ways that we can do that. There's other ways we can bring that dog mentality out of a kid. And you'll see later on in one of the videos that uh, that I sent you that we, we can definitely tap into that, tap into that dog mentality um, through through other ways without loading the bar with weight on it. And just to make ourselves feel good about our, like I said, make ourselves feel good about our culture just being mentally tough just because we, we throw a lot of weight on. You can, there's other ways you can do it. No doubt. And obviously like, you spent some time doing the uh, the Parisi certification, right? And so yes, not yes, just so weights, but like the explosiveness, the plyometric work, and mm -hmm. just can you give kind of a quick briefing on that? Yeah, so uh, you know, speed speed certified. Um, you know what what I've learned through that is just really how to um, balance your body and um and, and and get your body to to be aware of how to change direction how to be, be more explosive off that first step, uh, quick twitch muscle, um, the power, uh, force into the ground when it comes to speed. You know, there's a lot of things that um, we don't utilize, you know, and, and I want to be able to get my athletes to understand uh, body control. Uh, I want to get my, my athletes to understand how to accelerate, you know, 45 degree body angle coming out of their, 
acceleration, you know, every sport, you know, as far as high school sports, you know, I coach football, I coach track, I coach basketball, all those sports, you got to be able to accelerate. You got to be able to change, change direction. You know, you got to have some, some agility work in there. Um, you got to have some plyometric work in there. You got to be able to jump. You know, um, we not only focus on jumping, we focus on landing, you know, every, you know, again, I'm a victim myself. You know, we, we sit there and we tell all of our athletes, you know, hey, jump, jump, jump. But have we ever really taught them how to land? You know, I think that's a big one when it comes to injury prevention. So uh, through off season, we, we add in all this stuff um, and, it, and, and we make it fun and it's good work for them. And you know me, uh, I'm obviously a victim of the landing. Um, <laughs> oh, season. yeah, for sure. Yeah, for I'm, sure. I'm, for I'm, sure. I'm, I should have I should have sent you that video from Huddle. <laughs> Me hopping down the sideline, calling plays. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, hey, I, sh- I, I should have used you for speed work when you're chasing down your guy after he caught the caught the bang route. <laughs> oh, coach, we we have that. I can pull that up real quick if you oh, want. Oh, for sure. <laughs> I got the one from last year with the mirror on the arrow, and then this one with with Tiangelo on the bang. So yeah, so there you go. <laughs> the towel comes off and everything. I, everything. I yeah, there you go. You get. It. You talk thing. about acceleration right there, man. Not bad for an overweight there you go. tubby dude who coaches football on the side, right? That first step, get out challenge, man. Uh, real quick, though, just for the fun part of it, man, when we were at Or City that first year and, you know, that misty rain starts rolling in and that cork field and it was kind of a, a strange just day in general, right? Like that was a, a for weird sure. night. For sure, for sure. And then – in the third quarter, like we finally like click a little bit on offense for the first time. We had a we had two guys go down, uh, basically pregame. Early man, pregame, yeah, pregame, and that changed the entire game plan. And so we're we're kind of making it up as we go, and we finally get something going. We get a big score, and I'm just trying to create a little bit of juice. Big big jump, big <laughs> jump, big jump. Yeah, yeah. But then I come down crooked on one leg. And that ankle pops out of socket. No and I'm good. Just laying face down in this court turf field, going, "What am I doing with my life right now? <laughs> what is going on?" Yeah, I didn't know. I, I didn't. I didn't know what I, I was like. Uh, I cannot call the offense. So this guy better get up right now. He better get up. <laughs> Coach Powell's gonna have to come over. He's gonna have to start signaling. Um, and slam it into the ground because it was like it was popped out this way. So. Slam it back in, it, it goes back. Yeah. Not a fun time. And then not a fun time. Hopping around in the boot. Like you had a boot on for a few weeks. And it was just it was bad. It was pretty bad. That was that was a maybe the roughest night of my coaching career. I will say you bounced back fairly quickly though. You know why? Because I had a great strength and conditioning coach uh, who he and I got the tag team uh, rehab and yeah, athletic training duties and I've learned a lot. I learned a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I learned a lot. We tag teamed yeah. my ankle back together, and by the end mm-hmm. of the season, I was kind of walking around in a in an air cast. So yeah, uh, but man, what a time to be alive! And coach, <laughs> it's that you work on your landing with your student athletes because exactly landing exactly. is important. So I know since our time together, I put a lot more emphasis on landing, and so we we do a lot of plyometric jumps, but I, I do steal a lot of the stuff that you talked about going into the spring and the summer from last year about landing and, and moving after the land. And so uh, yeah. big thanks to no, you for that great. stuff. Cause I, I love doing that stuff now. That's great. That's what it's all about, man. Sharing your knowledge. No doubt. All right. So let's, let's get back on topic here. Sorry. I like to, I like to take detours around sometimes. Uh, so it's all good. It's that Trinity in me, I guess. <laughs> uh, Obviously, okay, big thing here, and th- I love this from last year, and I hope that we get the doing it back here again soon. Uh, due to some COVID issues, we haven't really quite got it back on on train, but uh, commit time in order to get results from athletes and coaches. Breakfast Club. Oh, yeah, for sure. Talk about uh, Breakfast Club for a second. So, so man, it, it originated at Queen City. You know, my first year at Queen City, I'm fresh out of – well, not really fresh out of college. You know, I was a juvenile probation officer before I was a coach. So I'm really kind of fresh out of juvenile probation officer uh, into coaching. Um, really 
really in my prime um, and and really wanted to, we had a bunch of athletes, man, that, that were kind of weak, um, but we needed to get stronger. We needed that extra work uh, in, in, in off season. So uh, what I started doing was waking up in the morning with the powerlifting coach and going to the school early in the morning and, and opening the weight room for kids to be able to go in and get some lifts. You know, I would just write the workout on the board and they would just kind of head it up and do it themselves. And, and I would get my lift in and they would get their lift in. And, uh, and, and, and before you know it, you know, we, we had a, a good amount of kids there, you know, lifting in the morning, um, getting some good extra work in. And, uh, and, and we just kind of started there, man. And that's when it all created the breakfast club. You know, we started bringing in breakfast for the guys and bringing in, you know, donuts, milks and juices. And, uh, and we never did eggs, you know, Ramey, Coach Ramey, you came in clutch, this uh, when, when we were together at Queen City and started making pancakes and eggs and burritos and tacos and man, you yeah, you did it big. I never, I never get, I never got to do it that big, uh, but but it it just stuck with me all, out through my career. Um, and, and again, because I am a guy that I do believe in putting in extra work, you know, and I believe that's going to surpass a lot of athletes because it's hard to put in that extra grind. You know, what I mean, it's hard to wake up at five o'clock in the morning you know, and get to the high school just to put in more work. It's difficult. You know, a lot of kids not doing that. So so I truly believe um, that's going to help you as a young man in life uh, to better yourself as a young man. Uh, and that's going to help you um, be a better teammate, uh, be a better son, be a better, you know, brother, be a better, you know, grandson. That's just going to help you with everyday life, just being able to wake yourself up and put in work, you know, and nobody had to tell you to do that. You chose to do that. Right. Yeah, that's good stuff. And uh, you, you mentioned the eggs and the and the breakfast that we uh, that we started whipping up. And <laughs> obviously, shout out to Easton Drotty and Eric Drotty for helping me yeah, pay yeah. that because over time that starts to add up a little bit. So having coached, sure. like it takes a fan, like it takes a village to raise a kid, right? And so yeah, it takes a coaching staff to build an off season, I think. And yeah, of um, course, man. It's not it's not just the athletes. I think sometimes we we harp on, you know, and again, and, and I say we, uh, as in I'm including, I'm including myself, you know, I think we as coaches, we put so much emphasis on the kids, like, man, these kids don't do this, these kids don't do that. Well, what are we doing to help the kids get it done? You know, right. what, are, what are we doing to, to ensure that um, we get kids at the school when we need them? What are we doing to help ensure that our kids are staying in our programs and not going elsewhere? You know, what are we doing to, to better our program and to make our program the best program in Texas, you know? So sometimes we got to point the finger at ourselves. No doubt. And so this pyramid I'm looking at here, we got mobility, agility, speed, power, and strength. So yes, sir. Walk, walk me through this idea you got going on here. So, so man, just kind of my knowledge and being in different programs and, and um, you know, just everything that I've learned, along the way through through going to clinics and, and talking to coaches and being in different programs, I kind of created my own little pyramid. And, and, and I believe in off season, um, if you want to have a great program, and, and this is any program, I believe, that it starts with strength. You know, you can't neglect strength. That's, that's your base. Um, I believe that's where it starts. And then um, from there, you, you build power. And one may say, well, coach, what is the difference between strength and power? I've had somebody ask me that. And, uh, and, and I'll tell you this, strength is, is how much can I lift? You know, how, how strong am I, right? And then power is how fast can I move that weight? You know, how fast can I transition this? You know, um, you know I would love for a powerful, you know, we want our, we want our D-line very powerful. Yeah, we want them strong, but we want them powerful. We want them to be able to jack that O-line up and move them around quick you know, and get off of them, shoot them hands. So, so strength and power. And then, um, and then I'm looking for speed, you know, um, I'm just looking for, you know, Hey, how can we, how can we gain more speed? So we go from strength, power, speed, and agility. Um, that, that's our, that's our change of direction type stuff. Um, when, whenever I say agility, you know, our quickness, um, a change of direction and then mobility. And this is one where I really, 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 really like to focus on, you know, Honestly, I probably should have mobility as number one, you know, but, but, but mobility is very key. You know, sometimes, you know, I think as coaches, we, we neglect it, you know, it's very important to make sure 
you add some stretch days in there for your kids. You know, you're pounding the weights, you're doing all this stuff. Don't ever neglect that you got to have a mobile athlete. This, again, you talk about injury prevention. This is something that's going to help you with your injury prevention. This is something that's going to help you keep your athletes on the playing field, right? You right. got to add mobility. And some things that we've done in the past is, is uh, yoga. You know, one may laugh at me and say, man, y'all doing yoga and football? Yeah. And I guarantee you, we probably some of the most limber athletes, you know, you, you've gotten, you know, and, and, and I believe that's important when it comes to um, strength and speed, you know, being being mobile. So uh, so that that's just kind of where, where I will kind of base everything off of strength, power, speed, agility, mobility. Gotcha. And, you know, just kind of going back again, it's easy to pull stuff when we were together, right? Yeah, so, for sure. Uh, there were times where we had, we were, we were running like at the weight room during the period, like a five station circuit kind of thing. And yeah, uh, you kind of put me in, kind of in charge of agility mobility. And, you know, sometimes we did power, sometimes we did explosive plyos, whatever, whatever. Um, but I remember you like, hey, we're, we're going to focus a lot on strength and power over here. When we got everybody, yeah, we want to do some plyos, but as much as foot fire stuff, hips, uh, hamstring work that we can do, like in, in that section, um, like give give your guys a coach, uh, give a, a coach the access to go in and work with those guys on a daily basis in those categories, right? And so like, oh, for sure, if you're able to, if you're able to divide up a, a weight room or a, or a training day into five sections, why not use these five sections and let's, let's focus on each of these suckers. Like, yeah. So, and, and man, you know, right now we're, we're, at, of course we're at a, you know, we're at Conley high school, five, a program um, where we're on block schedule. So man, we get our athletes for, you know, hour and 15 minutes. And, you know, now that it's COVID, we get an extra, man, we're in there for sometimes two hours, you know, so we can put in a lot of work, man. And, and you can, and, and, and I'm not going to tell you, hey, you know, you should be lifting three days, doing speed agility too. However you break your program down, I will tell you, if you're going to be lifting every day, you need, to add a, you need to add a mobility station in there. If you're not going to be lifting every day, you need to make sure that you add something in there where you can get, you can get some mobility. And when I say mobility, I mean big, big time stretching, foam rolling, stuff like that, um, really taking time. And then you know, like you were saying, um, agility, we, we all need, we all need that, that fast twitch foot fire, um, you know, that type stuff in there as well. So with our 50 minutes that we had at, at, at Queen City, man, that's not a lot of time. And that's 50 minutes to, for your athletes to get dressed in the weight room, uh, in their lines, and, and you got to talk to them and we got to stretch. Uh, by, time, by the time we actually get done with our warm up, we're at 40 minutes, you know, and that's, that's hoping everybody's showing up on time. You know what I mean? Right. So, so, so you got to understand the way we did it. We had to do it like that for our program, for us. So yes, we had different type of stations where, Oh, on this side, we're focusing on core lifts. Um, today is a, mainly a strength day uh, where the next day may be power, but you're always going to be over here. Um, you know, we had a, we had a hurdle station outside where they would go through the hurdles, over the hurdles. You remember that? And then that was our mobility stuff. And then you will run our fast twitch muscle stuff where you're kind of foot fire through the ladder drills and then just fast twitch, quick twitch, um, using some of the weights, popping those feet off and on, off and on, um, jump ropes. I know Ramey loves his oh, jump ropes, right? Ramey's jump ropes. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so so all that stuff um, you did with when it comes to our speed and agility. And that's how we worked our 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 um our stations, man. And, and I, and I, I truly believe, um, you know, when I left Queen City, man, it was no doubt in my mind that when I left that you guys were going to be okay going into that next season from the work that we put in. No doubt. Well, let's, uh, let's keep trucking along here, man. And so key elements, productive training, and we've got intensity, consistency, accountability, mental toughness. I, I noticed we got three it words. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, we got to come up with something for mental toughness to be like an it it word too somehow. Oh yeah, we got to, we got we to. Man. I, I just, I, I didn't, I didn't even notice that I was going with the it words in there. <laughs> I think we actually had those like on the shirts, right? Or yeah. 
one one version of the shirts we had those on. Yeah, we yeah yeah I think you're right. But yeah, man, I I really think that these are key elements when it comes to uh, productive training. You know, intensity. You know, when we talk about intensity, um, you know, we got to make sure that uh, we're 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 not just trying to get through the workout. You know what I mean? Like we're we're really focusing on the athlete and, and, and our training program um, because at the end of the day, we're trying to we're trying to make a a better athlete. And, and in some of the videos, you'll see. You know, when it comes to off season, we're very intense. You right. Know, it, it, we're not we're not quiet. You know, nobody is. All of our coaches are very loud. We're in it. Right. It, it's 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 100. Again, if you're going to be if you're going to have so much intensity, you got to make sure that the weight that you're doing is the required amount. You know, what I mean, like I don't want a intensive day to be a. 90% day, you know what I mean? 90% is not going to be your in, intensity type of workout. Um, but, but, but I do want it to be loud and crazy. You know what I mean? Like I want it to be fun. I want it to be energetic and then consistency, right? Um, you know, remaining consistent throughout a training program before and during and after workouts, right? Preparing the body to train with good eating habits, proper rest and recovery, all right. And you got to have it every day. You got to make sure that, you know, your athletes are, are going to sleep on time. And of course, you know, we can't control any of that. But but what we try to do is we try to build our athletes around these key points to where it's engraved in their head that this is what I got to do to be successful. This is what I got to do for my coaches. This is what I got to do for the guy next to me. Right. To be to, to have a successful off season so that we can have a successful program. So uh, all that stuff matters and accountability. You know, you got to, you got to hold yourself accountable, your coaches accountable, um, you know, your teammates accountable. You got to hold everybody accountable uh, and, and, and that mental toughness, you know, we keep going back to that, but, but I just truly believe that that is very key. Um, in, not just an off season. This is a year round thing. You know, we're going to be mentally tough than a lot of people. You don't, that's mental toughness is one thing that I don't have to be athletic to have. You know what I mean? Like, I don't have to be an athlete to have mental toughness. Yeah, you may be a better athlete than me, but you're going to have to deal with me for four straight quarters. And if you want to go in overtime, we can go there too. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's just that, it's just, it, it got to mean more to you that I'm physically and mentally tough than you. And you may be physically stronger than me, but I'm just mentally tough than you tougher than you when you knock me down I'm back up in your face ready to rock and roll and you're gonna have to continue to do this all night long and you finna have to deal with me all night long no doubt no doubt and then we got this little chart here so we talked about strength and power a little bit uh and then we've got two new columns we got going on so yeah 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 so hy hypertrophy so that you know really when you when you go into your off season again different programs when, when when I was at Queen City um you know I had I had a coach in this year and I had a coach in this year you know and I'm trying to create a program and, and really I wanted to try it out so so I had one coach you know I went to a clinic and I had a coach talk to me about you know even in even in season we're not just lifting to maintain we're lifting to get stronger even in season so as you can see, um, through our in-season program, there wasn't days where we said, hey, we're going to take it light because we got a game tomorrow or we or we going to take it light because we're in season. No, we're, we were lifting 85, 90 percent even in season. Uh, but but getting out of season and transitioning, um, what I like to do is start with that, you know, that endurance um, hypertrophy phase where it's just a lot of reps. And, and, and just pounding the weights, you know what I mean? Just a lot of reps, lightweight, a lot of reps, right? So, and, and, and as you can see, you know, that that's looking to be about 12 to 15 reps. You know, this may be, and, and what I like to do is I like to change it up sometimes. I may say, hey, we got 12 reps today, knock them out. And guess what? You know what it's going to be on. It's going to be on the whistle. You already know that, right? Oh, no doubt. Everything, everything is on the whistle when it comes to off season. Uh, it's going to be on the whistle. We got 12 reps. You're on my command. You're on my cadence. 
All right. And then you may rack it or I may say, hey, you know, on the whistle, you got 30, you got, you got, you got 20 seconds, get as many reps as you can in in 20 seconds, rack it, second man, you're up, let's go. You know, so just changing it up every now and then, you know, and it can, to kids, they, you know, they, they don't, you don't want them to get stagnant where they just kind of, oh, we're going to off season and this is what we're doing. We're going to off season. This is what we're doing. No, you don't know what we're going to be doing in off season. It may, it may change, you know? So, so you, you just kind of, you just keep it fun. Right. So changing yeah. it up every now and then. So that's the, that's those endurance and hypertrophy, just a lot of reps. All right. Not, and, and, and about three to six sets, uh, but a lot, a lot of reps. It's almost kind of like everyone talks about kids need to be on a schedule, right? Like mm-hmm. players need a schedule. Everybody needs to stay on schedule. But sometimes when it comes to the training aspect of it, it's good to kind of throw in some kinks in there just to, not only to see how they're going to respond, right? Yeah. But but also because yeah. you're working different things. And so. Yeah. And we do have different phases. You know, we have phase one, phase two, phase three, phase four. And, and phase one is mainly, uh, you know, just – how many reps can I get in? Cause you know, we're on the cards, right? We, we, we on the cards. So that's probably like our 50%, right? That, that first phase is a hey, we're at 50%. We're just getting a lot of reps. And honestly, you know, as you'll see, when we pull up the videos, that first phase is kind of like, kind of like our boot camp. you know what I mean? Like we're, we're really just using our boot camp to get that stuff in, right. To get our lot of reps in uh, intensity, you know, uh, and, and, and that mental toughness during, during that phase right there. No doubt. All right. Well, to keep us on schedule, I'm going to keep rock and rolling here. All right. Yes, sir. All right. So foundation team athlete, ultimate attitude slash effort. Love the, the addition of the ultimate there. Yeah. Yeah. Pride. So let's build this foundation real quick. All right. So so when it comes to foundation, man, you know, I I do think it's important that you set goals for for your coaching staff, for your program, for your kids, uh, for yourself. You know, everybody need goals when you're going into offseason, you know, uh, because, again, what's the point of training so hard if you know you're not reaching anything? We got to know what we're reaching for. And and so um, when you're setting that foundation, you know, I truly believe um, our our team goal, um, you know, what, what I've kind of, in, in my, in my opinion, you know, we're, we are the strongest when we're together, training hard together, sacrificing together. All right. Setting goals and achieving them together, getting to know and hanging out with each other, making each other accountable. As you can see, everything was about what brotherhood unity. That's another it word, right? Brotherhood and unity. And, uh, and, and I just think, man, just for a true off season to be great, we got to be one. We got to be together. And uh, and I think that's just kind of like our our, our team uh, goal. And, and you'll see, man, and you know me, Ramey, I don't really talk much about winning. I don't. You know, there's not one thing in there that's about winning. You know what I mean? I, I truly believe the wins will come once you get these other things taken care of. You know, the wins will handle itself. If we can handle everything else right here, the wins will come. You know, so let's let's start with that with that developing that team goal and getting everybody together, man. And, and I think once we're one brotherhood, we'll be rock and roll. No doubt. And so breaking it down a little bit, it takes athletes to build this team, right? So we're going to develop these athletes. Correct. So mentality, you know, that that's one of the first ones, um, you know, I got there right there, uh, maximizing intensity during the entire workout not just going through the motions, you know what I mean? Like, you know, you got to have a certain mentality when you come in, when you come into my off season, like, yeah, you, you got to, you got to be mentally prepared, physically prepared. You got to be there, right? You, you just, you got to have the right mental game. Your mental game got to be strong when you coming into, into, into the off season, into the weight room, into the gym, on the field, whatever the case may be, you got, you got to be mentally strong, right? No uh, in, integrity. Right. Doing the right thing, even when no one's watching, because there's so many times where, um, you know. I may say, hey, you know, today it, it's on you, you know, hey, we're, we're, we're in our we're in our power phase. So we got we're at 90 percent, you know, we're at three sets and we're doing three to four reps or whatever. And, and it's on you. Right. I'm giving them the opportunity to to be able to take control and handle their own, right? 
I got to know that they're going to do their reps. I got to know that they're going to be on the correct 90%. They're going to add the right weight. They're not going to cheat it, right? And like I tell all my athletes, it's not just, you know what, we have, what, five or six coaches in the weight room? Give or take. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not just five or six coaches. And we got 60 coaches in this weight room right now. Everybody is holding each other accountable. All of us, right? When you see a guy doing something wrong, you let him know. That's part of integrity, right? That's part of you making sure that, that our team is going to be successful because you're not only doing the right thing, that guy is too, all right? And then the next one, leadership, right? You got to have guys ready to take place of your leaders that's gone. You know, we, we you know, this, I guess there's this old school rule that, you know, only seniors or can lead. Man, I, I think there's, I think anybody could be a leader. I, man, we've had we've had younger classmen be leaders, you know. <laughs> and um, yeah, and right now we we have a lot of younger classmen. I think one of our best leaders in our program is a ninth grade. You know, I'm not gonna even lie to you. I really do. Um, and we do have some great leaders that are upperclassmen, but man, we got some great younger guys too that can step up and be leaders. Uh, but but you gotta be you got to be willing to to create some type of leadership in your program, right? And, and when you're developing these athletes, you got to put them in situations to be leaders. You know, everybody say, man, we need leaders. Okay, again, point the finger back at yourself and see what are you doing in your program to develop leaders, you know? Uh, and then uh, competitive, right? When it comes to just competing, you know, again, maybe it's a new school thing uh, because, again, some programs that I've been into, um, I have coaches kind of really dislike this, but I think it's important that that you, you know, again, I, there may be a people, a lot of people that knock me for this, Ramey, but I really do think it's important that that we reward people uh, for for their efforts, right? In off season, um, some people may say, "Well, well, you know, I think it's just they they should just do it," and and because at the end of the day, winning is going to be the reward. Again, I don't talk about winning; I talk about how can we how can we get these kids motivated to compete, have fun, and be able to reward them for their, it, it can be a shirt. You can give, hey man, good job. You you win the top dog shirt of the day. You know, it don't always have to be something crazy, you know, but 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 just showing them, you know, what, what we do, we gave a belt, championship belt. The championship you know belt. I mean? Yeah, man, you, you that was great. You know, after competition, the teams that won, hey, they got the championship belt, top dog, just like that. And, and, it, and it felt good. And guess what? The people that didn't get it, guess what they got to see? They got to sit there and watch that guy. And this is the top dog. And now I'm wanting more. You know, I want that. And then confidence. We got to build confidence, man. Um, we have to know that, uh, you know, our athletes, whatever they're doing, we got to make sure that our athletes know whatever they're doing right now, they're just investing in themselves for later, right? They're just, they're just investing. Everything that they're putting in now is what you're going to get in out of it later whether it be, um, you know, man, we didn't really do too well in our, in, in, in our, in our football season. Well, what did you do during off season? You know, and, and no knock to any coaches, but that first year we got to Queen City, everybody expected, man, they got new coaches here. They're going to be this, they're going to be good, but didn't realize what we was dealing with from the last off season. You know right. what I mean? Like, you know, we were, we all we got were there dealing, basically in July. Yeah. We, yeah. You really? got there in July. I got there in July. We didn't have time to even build anything in the summer, you know? Uh, so it's like, we're just, we're just pretty much dealing with what was left over from there. And when we talked to the kids, they, like, what'd y'all do last off season? Mm, Coach, you don't even really want to know, you know what I mean? Like, so, and, and, and that's why I think it's important, right? Um, when it comes to developing the athlete. So mentality, you know, integrity, leadership, competitiveness, and confidence. Confidence is key, man. And so ultimate, Attitude effort, right? Yeah. So when I say when I think of a program, when I see an athlete, right? When a kid is wearing that big old Q Queen City Bulldog shirt or a Queen City football, that kid represents you, you know. And we're talking about developing the athlete here, and we're talking about developing the ultimate, you know, athlete. What do you want your kid to represent from your program? You know, and, and, and I have a simple thing. Pride is that simple. And we break it down like this. Punctuality. You're always going to be on time. 
no matter what. Always be on time. You're never late to anything. You're going to respect, right? That's the art. You're going to respect people and people's belongings. You know what I mean? Not just, not just them, but you're going to respect their stuff too, right? Integrity. You're going to have great integrity, always doing the right thing when nobody's watching. Determination. You're going to be determined, right, to do, to do great in everything you do. I want to be the best. Have that attitude. And you're going to be excited, right? Enthusiasm. You're going to be excited to do it. So that's what, that's what it is. Pride, right? So when we're, when we're asking for attitude and effort, all I'm asking for is pride. That's all you got to remember, pride. <laughs> and then, like I said, you don't talk about winning. So no. atmosphere, goals, expectations is to serve as great men for your school slash community. The wins, that, that stuff comes after that. Yes, sir. And so developing the athlete, all these things, hopefully transitions into them becoming great young people, right? Exactly. And, and you believe life coach, right? That, that's hashtag life coach that? That's hashtag life coach, man. And, 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 you know, again, I haven't been in the game that long, but, but my seven years been in the game and I've, uh, I feel like, you know, through coaching, it's impacted me and a lot of people I've been around, man. And, and it's been worth it because, you know, at the end of the day, when I look back at some of my athletes that I've coached and I see them playing college ball or I see them, you know, working in banks, you know, and I see them being great young men, that's what matters. You know, a lot of time, I don't even remember the record. You know, I don't remember you scoring that touchdown, but what I do remember is how awesome you was as a young man. No doubt. And so when things don't quite go the way we want them to. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> but what's going through your brain on this discipline stuff? All right. So everybody don't have the perfect kids, right? You know, right. We, we, never, we never do. Uh, but – I truly believe when it comes to off season, man, and there's going to be some times where you kids just not going to want to do what you're asking them to do. They ain't going to want to be, you know, people just wake up on the wrong side of the bed sometimes. So no doubt. Uh, we're, we're victim of it too sometimes, right? Exactly. As coaches, shoot, sometimes we get in there slow, slowly rolling. And, and you know, sometimes I need coach Ramey. Hey, coach Ramey, I need some juice, bro. You're going to have to bring the juice today. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, I ain't got it. I ain't got it. But look, you know, when it comes to discipline, it, three simple things, you know, first thing, um, you know, right now we do Saturday practices, you know, and it's different for every program, but, but we do Saturday practices. And, and I, and I would say, you know, um, you know, if, if I'm having some problems with a kid, I'm gonna bring him up Saturday with the coach, you know, Hey, Saturday, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you something and you're gonna knock it out. Um, and, and we're gonna try to squash it that way. Right. Um, and if it continues to happen um, again, you talk about accountability, and, and, and raising good men and holding everybody. Remember, this is a brotherhood, holding everybody accountable. If it happens again, it's gonna be your position group. I'm gonna I'm get everybody. I want the whole, if I'm, if I'm a linebacker coach, if my linebacker um, gets, is, not, is not acting right in the classroom and I'm, getting parent, and I'm getting emails from teachers, they're not turning in assignments, this kid is risking, failing his classes, he may not, be on the team anymore, guess what? The whole linebacker group about to run. They about to do whatever this kid is doing, right? Uh, and if it continues to happen, I think the whole team should be punished for it, you know, because at the end of the day, when your offensive lineman false starts, does he move back five yards or does the whole team move back five yards? Believe me, from experience, I, I know that uh, the whole team <laughs> moves back five yards. Correct. So at the end of the day, you know, you're, you're one bad apple, you know, could cause the whole team to be bad apples, right? Um, so, and then again, after this third time, man, if it keeps happening, then we got, we got, we got, we got to see what we need to do about removing this bad apple from the team. And then we we ended back with that rules and policies, right? And so, oh yeah, I'm like square one. Let's talk about the uh, the mindset in this weight room. So, so man, first rule: no excuses. Nobody cares. Love you know, I, it, that that's that simple, man. I can probably make this rule number one through seven. No excuses. Nobody cares. You know, I, you get so many. I'm telling you, man, off season is the worst. It's spring. You got a lot. You got people playing basketball. You got track. You got you got you got baseball about to start. You got a, a lot going on in off season. Right. Uh, so 
you get so many different excuses why a kid can't live or why a kid can't condition or why a kid can't do that. Man, dude, you know what? I I understand sometimes a kid may be physically hurt and, and, and all that. I get it, you know, and, and we'll take care of you. That's about, again, injury prevention. We'll take care of you. And we, we have some of the best trainers at Queen City, Queen City ever had, right? No doubt. <laughs> we'll, we'll take care of you. <laughs> but at the end of the day, no excuses, nobody cares. All right, we got to get the job done, okay? Number two, you must be present. You got to be present, right? In offseason, I need everybody here. We're trying to build a team, not just individuals. We're trying to be build a team to be great for next season. So, uh, and, and seasons after that, too. We're trying to build a whole culture, you know? Right. So so you, you must be present. Right. Um, and, and if you do have schedule conflicts, make sure you clear them with me 24 hours before. Right. Don't don't come to me that day and say, coach, look, man, I got this. I got that. Man, you I'm ready. Hey, I don't even want to talk to you right now because I'm I'm getting ready for I'm getting ready to work. You know, what I mean, I ain't got time to be talking to you right now. You should have been let me know that. And, and I get it. Sometimes things come up. And that's why I think you do have one coach on your staff that people can go to and talk to. And let and let things know, right? Because stuff do come up, and no you know, teachers, man, teachers will be quick to say, "Hey, I need this student," and you got to work with the teachers too. You you know that, man. So um, stuff come up, but but let me know twenty four hours if you can, right? Um, maximum enthusiasm and excitement is required to live. You know what I mean, like bro, like I don't want you in here. You know, you you yawning, you tired, you sleepy, you just going through the motions, bro. Get out of my way, next man up. You know what I mean? Like, look, we we here to work, we here to have fun, we we're, we're excited, bro. I need I need the energy. You got to bring the juice, right? Hey, and I promise you, if you match my tempo, you'll be great. You know what I mean? I, I'm 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 not the quietest in the weight room. No doubt. You know what I mean? So <laughs> so if you and that's why I tell my kids, hey, just match my tempo. We'll be good, right? Match my tempo. Um, and then um, only team issue gear in the weight room during all workouts. You know, I don't want to see no jury. I don't want to see any any hats on your head. Like, I want us all to look the same. You know, I want everybody to be one. Good. That's that brotherhood family that I'm talking about. Uh, no cell phones, you know, uh, required in the weight room. Um, players will be placed um, with certain training partners each day. All right. It's up to each player on their own to learn, to demand the most out of each other, right? So that's what we're talking about, putting each other, put people in groups um, so that we make sure, you know, some, I think we had like three people in a group um, at each station uh, and, and and you just got to make sure you're, you got three coaches in that group of three. Every single one of you have a job to do. Make sure you coach each other up, make sure you be excited, make sure you count as reps, make sure he stay injury free. Make sure you spot him. Take care of your brother. All right. And seven, the seven rule, it sums it up, man. Empty the tank. It's off season. Bro, every day you leave here, if you ain't leaving out of here, you know, we had a, at Queen City, we had a, we had a mirror, you know, in the weight room. <laughs> and, and, and we always would tell our kids, you know, fog it up, right? We want to be hot, sweaty, yelling, screaming. You know, we want to try to fog up the mirror. Hey, we did it a few times, you know. No doubt. It was fun. And the kids was so excited to see a foggy mirror. Like, how crazy is that, right? They were so pumped. They went over there, <laughs> blowing on it. <laughs> <laughs> blowing on the mirror. But they were super excited to see it, to see it, you know, fogged up, man. But empty the tank. I need everything you got. I need all the juice. I need all the smoke. I need everything you got, man. Empty it. Give it to me. Leave out of here 110%, you know, and, and let's go get it. You know, like like they say, what, 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 114? That's what that's when water start boiling. Or 112. 112 is when water start boiling. So I need 112 degrees. 212. 212. 212. 212. 212. 212. There you go. 212. 212. Once hey, once it hit two, that's what I need from you. I need I need 212. I need 212 percent so we can get this thing boiling and we can be in the right direction. No doubt. All right. So we've we've hinted at some videos, right? Gotcha. And so real quick, though, before we get into that, we've got rule number one. No excuses. Nobody cares. We've talked about some shirts. And so here were our off-season shirts from that year together, right? So we had yes. our uh, our base gray. We had our squad leader orange. 
and our platoon leader black yeah. on the back of everything. No excuses, nobody cares. Every day they seeing it in, in line, perfect line. I want eyes forward, I want hands behind your back, eyes forward, and every day in your head, I can probably call an athlete from Queen City right now and say, hey man, what did you see on back of that dude's shirt in front of you? No excuses, nobody cares. Like every day they see that. Every day it's engraved in their head. They coming in that weight room. Hey, coach, I got. Hey, no excuses. Nobody cares. Get in line. Yes, sir. <laughs> so now it takes that mentality. And so, uh, the way we broke this up, we we had we had a platoon leader for each like family, right? Yes. And so, uh, the platoon leader was the guy in your group that you felt stood out the most as your leader, right? He was the guy that. Yes. He was your hardest worker. He got guys in line. He's doing the right thing. This is what we want you guys to be. We This is the example. This is the bar, mm -hmm. right? And then we had a couple squad leaders that honestly could probably be wearing that black shirt, right? Like you yeah. could be wearing that black shirt, but right now. You're just not cutting it right just, now. He, yeah. he got it. Like it's, yeah. it's his shirt. You've got to take it from him somehow. Go get uh, it. But those guys also were responsible for the guys behind them. Exactly. Right. And so we had we had one platoon leader, two squad leaders, and then the rest of the family was in the base gray. Yes. And 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 and, and, uh, and honestly, you know, just everybody didn't have a black shirt. Every line didn't have a black shirt. That's right. We had to earn that black shirt. We didn't give a black shirt to not one person. So there were some lines that didn't have a platoon leader because nobody stepped out. Nobody went to go get that. Nobody earned that. Like everything is earned. There's nothing, nothing that's given in off season. You got to earn that. Right. So we didn't just say, Hey, we're going to select these kids to be platoon leaders. No, nah, everything was earned. There's not one shirt. We gave everybody great shirts. Everybody started with great shirts. Now we picked leaders that we thought, you know, hey, this guy is gonna be. This guy is probably the platoon leader. This guy is this, but you know, there were some sleepers that stepped up and ended up taking a shirt that we're like, "Holy cow, what is going on here?" This guy got the shirt first, but that's what it's about in off season. It's just you never know. You earn that, right? Yep. And the way we ended that phase, I had uh, Cody was my black shirt. Yeah. And no one's radar had Cody at, at no. one of the colored shirts. Like he was going to be no. in, a, in a gray, right? Yeah. But that fool came in there every single day and gave everything to it. Yeah. And, and, and this is a guy, again, you know, speak about Cody a little bit. This is a guy who, who was a backup on defense, a backup on offense, a backup on special teams. He had no reason to go in there and just, oh, I'm going to go. Like he wanted that. He wanted that so bad that he earned it. No doubt. And then I actually ended the, the phase with only one squad leader. Yeah, see? I had Aaron know. Jones as, as my orange shirt, and I didn't have a second orange shirt. I kept waiting for the guy to, to take it. I kept waiting for it to take it. And then at the end of the day, he just never he just never, never took did. it. Just never and that was, Aaron Jones was a sophomore at the time, right? Right. Yeah. So, again, that, that, that lets you know right there. Leaders lead, man. It doesn't matter if they're a senior. and Because I've been around programs where – Hey, our captains are seniors, and that's that. But but we're gonna put this kid over here that's that's a leader in the background, and we're not gonna allow him to lead. Like, come on, man, we're we're neglecting that kid because we want just seniors to lead our program. Like, yeah, there are some programs out there that you know the Duncanvilles and the North Shores, and they probably got plenty of seniors that are captains and leaders. But there are some programs that you we need these younger guys to step up and be leaders, and that's what your guy did. No doubt, and. Cody was a junior, Aaron was a sophomore. And uh, I think your line was was the family that wound up with no black shirt at the end, right? Like you- uh, yeah, you know me. Because <laughs> <laughs> you'd walk my, in there with the gray and orange yeah, black shirt. Yeah, hey, every day. Shirt, and I'm snatching it every day. I'm snatching kids' shirts off their back. Give me this shirt, give me this shirt. I want this shirt, you get this shirt <laughs> every day. It, it was so, it was crazy. <laughs> I had a lot of fun just watching you go to work though. I mean, that, that, that stuff was fantastic. Oh uh, uh, yeah, man. And so, which, which video you want first here? Uh, let's let's just go with uh, let's pull up the shirts. I want people to see the shirts, man. I, I really do. I think the shirts was pretty cool. 
Um, I think, you know, if, if, if you haven't gotten anything uh, for your off season program yet, man, and you want to kind of change up something, you want to do something for the kids, um, you're thinking about doing a boot camp. I think this is a great, great thing for you to do. You know, if you got any questions, you can always kind of contact us and let us know. Um, but yeah. Real quick, what's your Twitter handle? Man, that is a great question. It's at Coach Cossey. <laughs> at Coach Cossey, right? Yeah, at Coach Cossey. It's right behind his head back here. You see on his background. Yeah, right there. Coach Cossey. <laughs> yeah, at, at, at Coach Cossey, yep. All That's right, it. so any off-season questions you might have. Yeah, hit me up. <laughs> and so we'd be wearing these, and then we're in the weight room phase one. <laughs> and let's go. You've got my screen, right? You can see what's going on? Yes, sir. All right. Let's go here. Uh-oh. I can't I can't see your screen anymore. Oh, hold on. Yeah, so you're I'm still seeing I'm still seeing the uh bill in off season. What about now? No, so if you might have to take so like stop sharing screen and then share it again into your into your new one. Yeah, yeah, and uh, dude, I've I've done this so many times, dude. It's crazy. <laughs> I'm learning these ins and outs of this screen sharing stuff. So I need to go here. All right, let's try. See if this is it. You got that? Uh, all I see now is is um uh, one two. I see like five videos up. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm gonna figure this out. I'm gonna figure this out. Normally, I'm not the guy that has the tech issues. I, I don't. Yeah, I don't so like this. Maybe maybe play the video and then share. Hold on, hold on. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, share this. There we go. Get now we're rocking. Play. Yes, sir. Okay, I figured it out. All right, here we go. And so we're obviously we're starting on the Nutcracker stuff, right? Yeah. So so look, you know, nut Nutcrackers. You know, for for you people like man, what the heck are they doing? So anytime we see somebody. Um, you know, not doing something right. You know, if, if we say, you know, eyes, boom, they give us his eyes They're they're standing still, you know, hands behind their back, you know, everybody not moving or whatever, or, you know, there's certain commands that we have to say, right. Change, you know, move, you know, all this stuff. And if somebody's not going at a tempo, we would like them to go to, or if they're out of a line or they're doing their own lift when we're supposed to be on this lift, we say nutcrackers, boom, they immediately hit the ground. There's no but coach and this and that. No, immediately hit the ground, and then we start blowing that whistle. They're on a command. Shout out to the guy in the video that's actually taking over today and allowing me to record it. Um, I don't ever record workouts because normally I'm running the workout, but, but I got one of my best guys right there taking care of business for me. <laughs> and tell you what, I'm going to pause real quick because in that picture – we didn't have our shirts. I'm going to go grab one of the shirts real quick out of the closet. The coach's okay. shirt. Yeah. You remember those? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little dog with the hat. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Ramey created these shirts. That's why he wants y'all to see them. <laughs> That's my guy. Man, in this video, we only see one black shirt right now. Josh Davis. He was a dog. I will tell you that. He was a dog. He brought the juice every day in off season. Every day. Every day. We had to get us sucker washed every day. So this was our, we had it in the white with the orange letter. No excuses, nobody cares. Right, so they, they saw it on us too. And then on the front, I, I did a little little quick project. <laughs> <laughs> boot camp, man, it's boot camp. Bulldog, baby. Yeah, yeah, that's a mean dog. That's a nasty dog. <laughs> You don't want to jack with that dude on the wrong day, so. Nah, uh-uh. And so, man, have some fun stuff for your players, but I enjoyed wearing this as much as they enjoyed wearing those, I think. Like, I love Yeah, this yeah, shirt. yeah. No, that was that was awesome, man. That was awesome. I still sport that sucker quite a bit. I'm a big fan. But uh, yes, we'll, we'll jump right back into this. So, we're, we're starting on Nutcrackers. Something didn't quite go right. How are they going to respond, right? Yes, sir. They do 10 and they hop back up immediately in their position. So pause it real quick. So as you can, did you pause it? So 
uh, you can hear the whistle going at different tempos, right? And and, and so sometimes you know j- you know as a as a coach sometimes we do little jerk moves, right? So we're going to go fast, and, and it's on our cadence. Everything is on our cadence. We can go slow. We can go fast. You know, you heard Ramey two, 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 and hey, they better be on the right cadence. If not, we starting over. So, so that you got to be on cadence. You got to keep up. It's my pace, not your pace. Here's a another shout, out, Coach Easton. Drive out to Easton. The, uh, the orange. Drive, there you go. He got the nasty dog on. <laughs> You see, everybody's counting. Everybody's moving in unison. And we call our exercises. We kind of prepped them and told them, like, look, we got six exercises. These are the six exercises that you do. All right. Exercise one through six, whatever number I call out, that's the number you need to be on. Right. Hey, um, Coach Ramey, call it in the play. He's signaling in the play. I can't have one guy doing this and one guy doing this. We all got to be running the same thing together. So if somebody's not on the same page, boom, nutcrackers, we hitting it. Right there, you see the, the athlete goes in again because we didn't say move. He's going in and he's hitting his exercises again. Until we say uh, move, you don't move. And if they did move, whistle, nutcracker, nutcracker, here we go. Right back to the whistle. Yes, sir. And then, let's see, let's go. You got another view of, I think this is the same day, right? Yeah, yeah, same day. Oh, so, so, hey, this is a little funny story. Yeah, I hope they watch it. I hope they watch this, too. So this was an off season, you know, we're preparing, we're preparing for next season right now. You know, we ain't got time to wait. We're preparing for next season right now. We knew that our first opponent was going to be who? So in my mind, I remember that day it was like, well, what do we want to do for like conditioning kind of? Cause you know, we, we really hadn't quite fogged up the mirror yet at that point. Yeah. Cause getting kind of close to time. We really hadn't hit a whole lot of military press in a, in a hot minute. And uh, normally we're going, we were doing eight, right? Eight reps, eight. eight reps. Here, I'm just going. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> For, forget, forget the counting. We're not counting. Listen, you fools, every whistle, rep, Linden. Let them know we're coming. We're coming right now. And we're coming fast. We're coming strong. Uh oh. Linden, Linden, oh, Linden. Guys, some of these little freshman kids or, or guys that were, were brand new to this this whole training thing, right? And yeah, you know, a uh, couple of them didn't quite, they just couldn't quite work that bar. And mm-hmm. so, it's like, listen, we're, we're not getting a 35 pound bar. We're not having a little 25 pound dumbbell for you. Figure it out. Find, find a way to overcome a challenge, right? And so mental toughness right here. We're building it in you right now. And, and this gave, kid giving everything he's got. Hey, and he was in my line. And I will yeah. tell you this: he ended up with an orange shirt. And he this did. kid was like new to football. This kid ain't he was a he was a freshman that never played football in his life, but one one of the hardest working kids and was excited every day to be in there, knowing that man, I can't lift this crap. But guess what? He never complained one time about not being able to do it. He figured it out and got it done. And was it like the first, his first day in this? Uh, yeah, he kind of to, the, to the trash yeah, can. He ran, right? Yeah, he ran to the trash can. I made everybody do nutcrackers because he was moving. <laughs> I was like, dang, my bad. I didn't. Uh, he was like, coach, I was throwing up. I was like, oh, it's all good. Nutcrackers, let's get I it. I know excuse that nobody cares, baby. Here we go. Exactly. <laughs> and then. Uh, Taylor, let's, let's throw this tug of war real quick. And, and this was a day that we were, we were trying to get out of the weight room, right? But I think it, 
bad weather or storm going through and yeah we and, ended up and in the gym really, and, really it was one of our competition days you know we, we yeah. said we're gonna go we're gonna go in the gym we're gonna set up our little county fair stations in the gym and then after we're gonna compete uh so we did go to the gym uh two days out of the week we will be in the gym um where we were gonna be doing a lot of our plyo uh we had what four stations set up in the gym uh, one was uh, plyometrics was with me jumping and landing um, and then we had a jump rope station and then we had your station was the mat drills right and then we had a uh, another station um, on the other side footwork right they were going through speed ladders and stuff like that um, but yeah and then at the end of course we we want the best right we, we they were they had teams and uh, we want the best teams and we want them to compete and we want to have fun with it so we play a little tug of war Last week, Jody put me through my paces, man. Uh, we had – he took all of athletics and did a, a two-group divide. Tuesday, I had half in the mats. Thursday, I had the other half in the mats. I had mat drill duty double day. Oh, man. And I, I was – I bet you that throat was hurting. <laughs> I was worn out because – I bet. As hard as you go in the weight room, I try to make sure I bring that same juice to the mats. Got and, to, man. Oh, I, listen, Dry, I love mats. I don't know if I can go this level on mats two days a week again. Like that, that took <laughs> everything, coach. <laughs> oh my gosh, man. Yeah, we, we might have to pass some of the duties. Quick. Here we go. We got big baby at the front. That's my group too. Shout out to my group. I love you boys. Real quick, big baby. Uh, him and Lance, I don't know if you saw or not, but uh, they hit, I think, PRs on squat in that powerlift meet this past week. And yeah, they both took Six, first place 635. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Yes, sir. And that, the team, I don't know if you saw this, but the team wound up with more total points than Texas High. And um, oh, yeah, congrats, man. Big, yeah, big shout awesome. out to Tommy Kimmel over there. That's a great job, man. No doubt. And a lot of that groundwork that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Oh, there you are in the background. Let's go. Let's go. I just want to get, I want to get in there and pull it with him, man. Let's go. Let's go, boy. Come on, big baby. Come on, pull that. Who my anchor? Who my anchor? Who my anchor? Come on. Oz. Come on. Come on. You can't be sliding, bro. And, and we talked about the championship belt. I'm going to rewind here just a little bit. Ah, uh, come on, you had to do it. Over here. <laughs> and I think whoever wound up winning, like, because we, we had family versus family, right? And so mm -hmm. the whoever won the the final match got to take home the belt that day, right? Which was Dry's group, yeah. Lance Dry, did. That, yeah. that was the day that Lance got it. Yeah. Dang it. Ah! Yeah, come on, keep pulling. It don't matter. Whatever, figure it out. Whatever it takes. Yeah, we end up losing. Dang it, we lost too. Lance, get back, Lance. Get away from me before I punch you upside your head. <laughs> don't come over here flexing on me, man. <laughs> Thing is, is he can flex a little bit now, man. That that dude. Oh yeah, that's a good. Strong sucker. That's great, man. I heard he played great this year too. He did, man. He did. Uh, and so, flash forward. Like a week later, so we got we did the tug of war thing, and then you never knew when we were gonna do those like a quick competition, right? That that belt could change hands any day. Yeah, oh, any any moment we could say we could be like, hey, um, here we go, doo, doo, doo. you know, lines ready hit, boom, they get in their lines, and then we talk, we say, hey, look, we're about to compete, you know, this is what we're doing, and um, and we tell the coaches, coaches pick, you know, sometimes coaches pick, sometimes the player pick. We want your best player, we want your top dog to compete against everybody else's top dog. And we wanted one top dog at the end of the day. Because at the end of the day, we also knew that, you know, Lance is, he, he has a good chance of winning tug of wars. He's got a good chance of winning bench press competitions. Oh yeah, you gotta change it up. That we can get somebody else involved where Lance is either gonna have to A, overcome something crazy. Adversity. B, somebody else is gonna try to take that sucker away from him. Yes, sir. And, uh, so this was just something we came up with on the fly, I think, honestly, this was a moment of inspiration. Yeah. But, uh, the bait, the belt hanging. Yeah. We're going to do the dead hang. 
So there's Lance falling. Lance is out. Get out of here. Oh, here's my dog. There he is. I'm ro I'm rolling with Ramey today because my mine already fell. So I'm rolling with Ramey. Yeah, wait on there. We'll go get that boy that man ball. Oh, 10 pound weight? Ball. 50, that's a 15 pound man ball. He's got a hole on a dead hang. Dead hang, you put that ball between their legs. Hey, don't let it drop. If you whoever ball hits the ground first, they lost. Yeah. Yep. You won, you get the belt. And I think this and was again, the day that Cody won the belt, actually. So. Yeah, he did. And, and again, uh, find ways to compete and have fun in offseason. Like these these guys, they've been through a great workout today. We had some extra minutes to, to do some little competition at the end and, and, and have fun with it, right? And, and it's great stuff, man. It's great stuff. I think sometimes we as coaches kind of neglect it, man. You, you've got to find ways to – to, to, to make your athletes feel like we're putting in work, but it's fun work, so I want to be here. I want more. And so I've got – we got Cody here hanging. He's competing, black shirt and all. Bottom of the screen, we got another black shirt, different family, right? Orange shirt, uh, junior, different family. Here's a senior behind him rooting for him, right? And so – Try to like all these dudes are, are pulling for their guy, right? So everybody, we, we had the dudes that were competing. All right, everybody else, go to your dog. Like, who yeah. do you have in this? And what do you want? You're gonna and, find and, out real quick, like, A, who believes in you? And then B, how are you gonna prove the other guys wrong? So so here you see there's intensity, right? There's some leadership, there's some enthusiasm. Man, you, you got it all right here, right now. This is everything that we're trying to build in our culture, in our perfect program for offseason right there. Well, obviously, you know, we didn't quite make that playoffs this year spot, right? But I think we blew a lot of uh, expectations out of the water at Queen City this year. For sure, um, man. I'm sure a lot of people thought we were going to roll over and and take take a beating in a new district and whatnot. And you know, even though we didn't quite make that that last kind of team goal we had uh, to win week one, to week win two, win week three, make a, a the first district win in what, like thirty three games. Oh man, yeah, it it, it was crazy. And so, yeah. I, a lot of our success that we did have a leadership development, a guy like Demir, right? Demir was huge for us, not only making plays, but um, just from a leadership perspective and mm -hmm. when guys weren't right he'd let them know and um, I'm sure he kind of made the, the job easy for coach Powell a little bit at the receiver spot and then he's a guy that played DB for you this year hey we need you to come outside linebacker yep and and made plays made plays after play after play um, eight months after an ACL reconstruction oh man that's crazy that's crazy. unbelievable and so uh but that's how you but but again when you talk about a kid that had a mindset that if my city is gonna be successful, I gotta get back out. I gotta get back going. I gotta get back in the weight room. I gotta get back playing because I'm I want to be a big part of this, right? So so mentality, integrity, leadership, competitive, confident, all that, right? In the athlete. And had a great year this year. Had a great year. Well, coach, it's a uh, it's about ten fifty. We 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 went. We we talked a little bit here, so we got some good stuff going on. Uh, what I do know is next time I'm in the ATX or you're up in the Northeast, we got to do a one in person, right? We got to get a table out. We can draw. Some oh yeah, we got to link up. Have a little ball talk. Get on a little board wars, you know, chalk wars like we used to. Yeah, you got your. You board know me. Right I got here. my. I'm ready to go at any moment. I'm ready to go, coach. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to open up some can of worms at any time. Oh man. Oh man. And I, I, I've learned, I've learned a lot with this new coaching staff, man. You know, I've always coached secondary. I've always coached, um, you know, corners, safeties. Um, I'm, I, my passion is secondary. Um, but this year, man, kind of opened up, uh, I went to the coaching linebackers kind of opened up something new to me. Um, but it also 
uh, kind of gain more knowledge for me with, with the fronts and, and how, and really understanding um, offense of line play better and run game. So um, I think I got some stuff for you now, man, when it comes oh, to RPO. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm pumped up. <laughs> well, shoot, man. Uh, tell my I said hello. It's good talking good. to you, as always. Uh, miss having you around, but uh, we can do this anytime, right? So, yes, sir. Sounds good. Well, uh, like I said, tell my I said hello. Take care of the the newborn. Not newborn anymore. He's shoot. He's he's climbing all over he's the place. Now, nine right? months, man. But hey, I I guess you, you're gonna hear it here first. We got oh. one in the oven. Yeah, and it's a boy. <laughs> so you heard it on on J Rams on J Rams podcast first, man. You got the news. We got another baby boy. They're gonna play ball together. They're gonna have fun, go to school together, man, and and just live life together. So we're excited for that. Breaking news. Yeah, man. When, first. When's, uh, when's the expected due? Ju- July fourth. No way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know what? You did better. At least it's not middle of softball season. That is true. That is true. But she will be she will be pretty pretty big during softball season. The the new softball coach said, "Man, you must really hate softball season." <laughs> <laughs> that ain't right. <laughs> All right, man. Well, shoot. Take care. Uh, go have a great off season over there in uh, Pflugerville and. Uh, obviously, you know, you can hit me up if you need anything and, and vice versa, I'm sure. And we'll do this again someday. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. It was fun. I had, I had a good time, man. And and uh, I'm excited about what you're doing here. So keep it up, man. For sure, for sure. All right, dude. I'll talk to you later. All right, later.